Funding for Texas has been made possible by a grant from OIL. Oh, hey, you made it. Well, welcome to this video of Texas, and I hope that this gives you a chance to experience some of the culture and the unique things that I really find lovable about living here. So let's start off with a little bit of history. Actually, let's not start off with a little bit of history. Like if I was visiting one of y'all, my first thought would not be, okay, before we eat or we go do something fun, please tell me everything that's happened on this geographic landmass. So yeah, we're skipping that. However, I do want to address one question, which is, what is Texas? I asked 15 people who lived here, and here's what they said. So, Cowboy boots. If you'll go Cowboy boots and horses. Big. Bigger and better. Is all the money and all the women. Beautiful women and God blessed Texas. The flag, the Lone Star and the flag. Yeah. Yeah. So that's glitzy. Din Dan's backyard barbecue. Steers. Independence. Yeah. Blue bonnets. Cowboys. I also asked 15 other people who don't live here what the first thing that came to their mind when they heard the word Texas was. Gonna be honest, I didn't get quite the same number of responses. Yeah. But yeah, some of the stuff was good, so... The first thing I think of when I think of Texas is Dan Rather, and then cowboys and old western movies. Obviously, I've never been. Uh, cowboy hats, cowboy boots, Chuck Norris. Cowboys, because they like little hats and the boots and stuff. A big plate of barbecue ribs. Country music. Burgers. Uh, Don't they have a star on their flag or something? The Lone Star State. Isn't that Texas? Or maybe it's in another state? Yeah, no, that's a Texas Tornado. Oh, Texas Tornado. <laughs> I think he was from Texas. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Crew cuts. When I think of Texas, I think about the sheer vastness of a place which, as a state, is bigger than some countries. And I think about the diversity of the cultures and the landscapes and the richness of the history, good and bad. Also line dancing as well, again with hats and the boots. Trucks, big trucks and oil and uh, America and patriotism. Yeah, I, I, I imagine people in Texas would be the exact type of people who would say something if you don't like America, you know, go live in Scotland or some <laughs> Transylvanian. Ah. Budgets. Cheesy country music. I'm not gonna lie, the man I picture eating those ribs is morbidly obese. Did I say fat people? Them again. I forgot about Texas toast. Love a bit of Texas toast. And my favourite of all Cowboys go very different ideas but who's right and who's wrong is it just the perception of where we live the perception of others how do you know and I'd love to tell you that this video will help answer those questions but I kind of already shot most of it before I got the other input so yeah <laughs> So I've been trying to figure out how I would introduce the topic of business because if you say something like business is an essential part of life, it's really obvious. It's sort of like saying air is an essential component of breathing. Color is an important part of a rainbow. Anyway, so here I talk to an actual business owner about how to become a tycoon and a baron and a tyrant. Kevin Long, your business is orchard at the office, is it not? It is. You don't deny it? I don't deny it. We supply wellness for uh, corporate offices, uh, uh, fresh fruit, uh, as an alternative, a, a healthy alternative to uh, typical office fare, such as donuts and bagels. We keep office workers uh, healthy and happy and working, working all day long. If people get healthier, 
as a result of the products you sell, and then they're able to take less sick days. Employers can expect more productivity, probably. Absolutely, yes. Right. Now, in effect, though, aren't you trying to subjugate the uh, efforts of the uh, lazier employees of America, like myself, who rely on that as an excuse? <laughs> oh, yes. But we do have to get this out of the way because I want to make it clear to viewers. So I am of average height. I am 5'9". Kevin, how tall are you? I am 5'20". Steve Merchant height, ladies and gentlemen. So obviously bananas are your biggest buy. You've got lots of crates of those go out regularly, right? Oh, yeah. Now, how many crates do you give to politicians so that you can carry them in your back pocket like so many nickels and dimes? <laughs> no comment. So, Junior, um, you're helping out Kevin uh, in, in addition to, to a, a job of your own, is that correct? That's correct. When Kevin isn't looking, when do you intend to slip the dagger into his back and make your move and take over the entire enterprise? <laughs> that would not happen. <laughs> hmm. Is that because he's standing to my right? No. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Kevin. Can I steal all of these plums? Well, first of all, those are not plums. Those are plumots. Plumots. Plumot is a crossbreed between a plum and an apricot. Put those two together, put them in a bag, and then out comes a uh, plumot. You're making that up, aren't you? Okay, so um, in addition to bananas, you've got rounds that you put in the basket, and that's a generic term you use for... Anything that's straight fruit, which is a banana. Gotcha. Not a banana, it's a round. So we have a variety of apples. Uh, our favorites are Gala, that's a Macintosh. Golden Delicious. Plumots. Plumots, of course. Naval oranges. Now, let's say I am a green grocer, big wig of some variety, right? I think that you've got a good business, and I want to crush you like the opposition that you are. Um, in retaliation, which of these rounds would I expect to find smashed in my bed? Hmm. Well, actually, the first thing that came to mind was a horse apple. Horse. Hey! Which hand is holding the green apple? This hand right here. You are good, man. Kevin, is there anything you would like to say uh, involving sharing a message of wellness to the peoples of the earth? Uh, eat more apples, bananas, oranges, fair. OrchardTheOffice.com Now with a special report from El Paso, here's our on-the-spot correspondent, Michelle Escobar. Take it away, Michelle. To see something, so don't judge me. So this is El Paso. Over there's Mexico. Great job, Michelle. And now, back to the studio. What? I have some announcements I have to read, so... There's a 39 Honda blocking the drive. Uh, podcasts. If you like podcasts, go to loudyspeak.com. That's loudyspeak, that's one word, dot com. Flight 2341 from uh, coming in from LAX. Apparently it's going to be delayed by 20 minutes. It's going to be at gate 26B. Aunt Clara kept her Bible right next to the phone in case she needed a quote while she talked to someone. The arts are, of course, an integral part of any culture. Dance, poetry, all the other things that I'm not going to talk about in lieu of music. Texas boasts a proud and rich musical heritage, giving rise to musicians such as Buddy Holly, Janis Joplin, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Selena. Wait a minute. Do we have any musicians that didn't meet tragic ends? With performances that speak to our souls, Texas musicians enrich our heritage and share our legacy. I spoke with two of them. Evan, what's your name? I'm Evan Campbell. And uh, Pierce, what's your name? I'm Pierce Porterfield. And uh, the name of y'all's band is? The all right, so first of all, do y'all describe your musical style as blues or Tejano? Neither. Uh, 
community. I'm not aware that there's an option. Um, everybody knows that, that the, the true way to appreciate music is to, to dance to it. So when you guys want to get everybody on the dance floor, do you start off by playing Play That Funky Music White Boy or um, All You Want to Do? Oh, Mustang Sally. Well, we just kind of encourage people to sit down, be comfortable. <laughs> we like people to appreciate our music at their own comfort. We don't want to make them get up and dance because then they want to enjoy it as much. Okay, so now, wait a minute. Okay, that was weird. Now, Pierce, um, your natural voice is, is rather soft spoken, so when you're doing the real screaming, ah! how do you achieve that? I try not to scream. Best I can. It just feels, feels kind of gritty. I just don't like it. I, I don't hear a lot of distortion coming out. Um, what, what up with that? I don't really like the distortion. It just makes everything sound sloppy. It doesn't make it really sound too precise with distortion on. As as a band, you guys, you don't scream. You don't play with a lot of distortion. You you kind of prefer a cleaner, just more direct sound. Yeah. More precise. Are you hippies and are you trying to infiltrate children with the communist conspiracy? No, we're not allowed to give that information at this time. The the first song that you guys uh, released off of your um, your album is called. Stand in. What did you tell me it was called before? Song. It changes. And we, we basically change it. Every time someone asks me what it's called, I just say either Salmon or Sam, and it's whatever the first person told me. They don't even have a set name for their song. That is awesome. Do you guys mind playing a little bit of a song? We can do it. Excellent. We'll be right back after this message. Now this is what we call food, batter dip style, on a plate, a big old white bun with a heaping helping of stuff inside, piping hot tomatoes, lettuces and pickles, a big old tepid patty of meatness boiled up the way nature intended, crappitizing and with a throat watering, jug blowing, steaming, piling mound of fries, you'll say, where's the sink? Batter dip. Legally, it's food. Food. Beef ribs, fried okra, pecan pie, barbecue, chicken fried steak, 
watermelon, crawfish boil, green bean casserole, chili cook-offs, catfish, and of course, our favorite way to pack on the pounds, Tex-Mex, that unique combination of Mexican food with Texas flair. Janie, Molina. And Janie, the name of this restaurant is? It is Tia Juanita's Cocina. How long have you guys been here? We've been here 12 years now. When somebody comes in and they've never had like Tex-Mex before, what do you suggest to them? I normally suggest, suggest fajitas or the enchiladas mexicanas, which is an enchiladas, because everybody's pretty familiar with enchiladas and fajitas. The, the stuff that you guys sell, is that uh, from recipes that you had, had... That we created, yes. Very nice. Yes. And you do catering as well. Catering, we do. We have a banquet room in the back, and we also cater for, you know, events, special events, wedding, wedding rehearsals, or, you know, baby showers and stuff like that. If, if I order cheese enchiladas and I don't get them with onions, secretly, do you kind of judge me? Of course not. Ha! See, Jack, I told you. What do you got to say about that? <laughs> That's right. Now, Janie, for the uninitiated, could you explain menudo? Menudo is tripe, and a lot of times you don't want to tell people what it is, but it's tripe because they don't want to try it, but it's really delicious. And a lot of times people will try it when you don't tell them what it is, and they just love it. The, uh, the kitchen's in the back there, Janie. Can, can I go back there? Oh and my see gosh, it? no. That would be a health violation. Well, but you let that other guy go back there? No. Unless you're going to come in and wash the dishes, then that'd be a different story. Does it pay good? Uh, minimum wage. Let's go. <laughs>